Hey everybody, Mark Sadowski here with Tiny Shutter. Earlier in the month, I had a wedding to photograph up in the White Mountains. And the very next day, I went out along the you know various places in the White Mountains to do some iPhone photography. I uh, wanted to take advantage of the beautiful fall foliage and just I wanted to I wanted to see the, the, the beauty of nature. I, I love the White Mountains. Uh, it is very near and dear to my heart. And I, I just wanted to, to see if this is something that you, the viewer, would be interested in. So I wanted to start this episode by, uh, w with another disclaimer in that uh, part of the footage that I took up in the White Mountains was used, uh, I, I used a GoPro to, to get some of the images. Sadly, my GoPro, uh, the GoPro Hero 3, is uh, no more. I I'll try to provide some footage from it, but Really, the footage was really, really bad. I did not want the footage to go to waste. That's, that's one thing because I had a really great time up in the White Mountains and I wanted to share my experience with you guys. So that being said, let's go to the White Mountains. So that was the basin. Very fun place. Uh, very cool place. Uh, easy to get to. It's right off the highway. And I have to say that uh, going into my previous video of camera plus versus slow shutter cam, I'm going to say that I'm going to do a little bit of recanting, but not totally. Um, camera plus and slow shutter cam, I say basically one is as good as the other. In, in so many words there. I take that back. Uh, but that's not to say that neither app is uh, better than the other. Uh, I highly recommend that you get both. Uh, and the reason is this. Slow Shutter Cam is a very easy app to use. Uh, once you turn it on, you, if you had your settings pre-selected, it's ready to go right from the start. Whereas Camera Plus, you have to fuss around a little bit. And that could get annoying, um, especially if you're, you know, trying to do things quickly, especially if it's cold outside. Uh, you don't want to be messing around with the screen. However, uh, Camera Plus allows more options if you have a tricky exposure. Uh, this is the example that I'm using that, uh, that I photographed a little while ago. I didn't do very good video. It didn't come out very nice showing the screen and how I was tapping it. Again, I had to putz around with Camera Plus to make it, you know, make, make the photo good. But again, I was putzing around with it. Uh, it was necessary because slow shutter, uh, the slow shutter app wasn't allowing me to get the exposure that I wanted. Um, so if you have the ability to do slow shutter with Camera Plus, you know, that's definitely an app that you should already have, really. But for 90% of the stuff that I've been doing, it's been the Slow Shutter app. 
uh, because it's just the sheer ease of use and I don't have to mess around with a lot of settings. So I hope that kind of puts the nail in the coffin for that. I'm sure it won't, uh, but you know, say love you. So we took a quick stop at the Silver Cascade. It is a waterfall that is right off of Route 302. And as you can see by the road behind me. But I want to show you just how bad the drought has made things here in New England. Now, Silver Cascade is a pretty massive waterfall. It's tall. It is just this majestic beast that just flows right next to the highway but this is what it looks like right now we're gonna get a little closer I'm gonna switch the view here and here is the waterfall right now it is just a trickle So in the middle of all this drought, I was still able to find a great exposure just ahead of me. Uh, it is a beautiful little trickle of a waterfall. Uh, I have the colors right behind. Uh, I have the, you know, what's left of the cascade up ahead. Uh, but in the foreground is this beautiful little cascade. And I am right in the middle of this little chasm. I could never be here before. Uh, so I managed to climb down in here because, you know, there probably won't be another opportunity for, for this. Um, usually this whole area is just roaring with water. And now I'm able to just come in here, kind of squeeze in and get that perfect exposure. And uh, here's what I got. Continuing our adventure, chasing landscapes in the White Mountains, Glen Ellis Falls. And this is an interesting thing. Um, one, Glen Ellis Falls is a very, very heavy tourist heavy spot. Uh, I, I can't stress just how many people come to see Glen Ellis Falls. Um, this is one of the waterfalls that I have to say is not affected by the New England drought. And the reason for that is because uh, Glen Ellis Falls is in a, in a part of the White Mountains where the clouds condense against the mountains pretty regularly. And so the, the output of the you know, waterfall doesn't look like it's been harmed by the drought one bit. At least that, that, that's how it looks like in appearance. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the stuff that I captured. that I'm about to 
get to is Sabade Falls. Uh, we're going to take some of the classic photos of that waterfall. So this ends the series of chasing landscapes on the Tiny Shutter YouTube channel. Uh, that is not to say that we won't make more. Uh, do you like these videos? Do you like us going to, I mean, for, for my instance, it's New Hampshire, uh, possibly other locations in New England. But, you know, is this something that you enjoy watching? Uh, chasing landscapes in you know beautiful locations I am more than happy to do them and definitely definitely let us know in the comments below uh, we have an audio podcast that you can listen to with hosted by Joseph Ferreria and Matt Hoffman both those gentlemen are excellent iPhone photographers and I'm sure they will contribute to uh, chasing landscapes because they both live in different regions in the United States. Matt in Ohio and Joseph in South Carolina. Uh, but leave a message in the comments below. Do you enjoy it? Great, we'll make more. If not, you know, please don't say no.